Welcome back guys, today I'm looking at Pro Study. Now let's be honest, when you're doing research, you end up opening up loads of bookmarks, didn't you, and your research gets a bit messy on your browser. Maybe you copy and paste. This should take that all away for you. So what it does is you can integrate all your research in it and colour code it, organise it, and even create your reference list for you. So I'm not going to rabbit on, you don't really be rabbit on, so let's get stuck right into it. So when you open up the bar, just make sure you've updated it as well. Before we can do anything at the top, we've got projects. I've got nothing. So I'm going to start from scratch. So I'm going to do manage and I'm going to do new projects. So I'm just going to put, uh, let's put mental health in as an example. And then I'm going to put additional information. So you could put your module number, couldn't you, or whatever you want in there. But you have to add something in there. Now, category name. So let's just say that's what you're researching mental health, that's your module. And your category might be, what should we put in? Um, I'm just going to put in there memory, which ain't good because I've forgotten how to spell memory. There we go. Come to the right here, choose a color. So I'm going to make this green will do and select accept. So there we go. I've now got mental health. There's my module and there's my first category I'll do research on. Click plus to add another one in there. I'm just throwing this in there. You get any idea with this. Then you can add a third if you want, but I'm going to change the color. I mean, the colours can really help you because they stand out when you're doing your research. You can pop them into those colours, associated colours that you want. Then click OK. Look top right hand corner of the screen. You can see I've got mental health, my first project. So I can add multiple projects. And then I've got memory and cognitive. I'm going to do another one. Let's create manage and new. And let's pop something else in there. So you've got to do... Let's try that out because I've opened up my web page to have a quick look to give us an idea. Again, additional information. I'm just going to put module five, six as an example. Now, category. I could put ages, couldn't I? Again, choose your colours. You don't have to do this again. It's up to you. You can even choose the palette colour here if you want something specific. And even add the opacity there. Click accept. I'm going to add another one. So another category under my project name. Let's pop trauma in. There we go, and choose the colour again. Let's have that blue, accept. And if I click OK, you can see now I've got two projects where I can put my research in. I have me health and I have memory deficit in children. I'll click on it, then you've got your subcategories here. So I'm going to start with mental health. I've got nothing in there yet. By the way, if you ever want to change it, go back to manage. Select Manage Projects and you can edit them in there if you wish as well. Click the drop down menu if you need to add, or you might even want to actually delete one by clicking here as well. So let's open up your browser. I'm going to start with Sean Piget. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to grab any website really for now. Click on that. And click, click Continue. So I'm going back here. So I want to go into my first one, Mental Health. So he's talking about cognitive development there. So I can scroll down. Let's say I find something I want to use. I'm going to hold the left button and drag what I want. Once you've highlighted it, just tap which one you want to add it to. So I'm going to add it to cognitive. And there you go. So it's added number one. Scroll down a bit more. Not something else that you want to use. So stages of cognitive development. Again, just tap on which one you want it on. So I'm just going to do a left click and it automatically adds that information into there. So that's the first option. I'm going to come out of there. Let's do a little bit more on Jean Piget. So again, I'm going to scroll down. Actually, I might look at that and go, actually, a photo would be excellent to add to my research. Select the option here. You've got snapshot. Select image snip and then hold the left button and create a rectangle around the image or images you want. And it pops up this little window. Now, this gives you a couple of options. One at the top, you can make sure you're happy with the title. It's got the URL website link. Make sure you choose where you want to put it in. So it's going to my mental health. Where do I want it? Memory or cognitive? I just leave it in cognitive, I think. Now there's a really good option here later on called OCR. It stands for Optical Character Recognition. So if you've got an image with text on it, you can't assess or protected PDF. You can add it in here and convert that into standard text so you can work with it. Excellent option. But I'm just going to save as that's an image. And it's now going to save. You see number three in cognitive. So there you go, happy with that. 
I'm now going to change my research and I'm going to go to memory deficit in children. And we're now going to do a bit of research. Cambridge Neuroscience, so she's a well known British psychologist and brain science. I want to click on anything. That will do, just as an example. And again, do the same thing again. So if you're reading an article, you could highlight the information you want. Remember, do we want it in trauma? Let's tap it in trauma. Number one, so memory deficit in children trauma. And again, I might want that image. Tap on snapshot. Image snip. Hold the left button, create a rectangle around the text you want. That will do. And then I can choose where I want to put it in. So I'm just going to leave it in trauma. And select save. So there you go. I've just gathered a bit of information there as well. Research information. Just another quick point here. Let me just find you a journal quick. So let's go to Google Scholar. And let's say you're doing a bit of research. So I'm going to put in, I'm sorry she won't mind me putting this just as an example to show how to use the software. Because I'm not actually citing her. Here we go. So I'm going to look for a PDF on the right. And now, if it's not relevant, I'm just going to grab anything. Here we go. Journal, PDF. See, it's a journal at the top left-hand corner here and a DOI number. Now, what I could do with this, I've got an option. I could download it by tapping on it. And that will now be in my download folder. So this gives me the option if I want to, if I open up my folders. So you've got loads of journals that you've downloaded that you want to access and add it to your pro study. Go to downloads. And then I'm going to hold the left button and drag that to where I want it. And there you go. I've now dragged that into ages. I've now got that PDF stored. So you can drag files in that's on your laptop, on your Mac or your PC as well, really easily. So there we go. Got to minimise that. So you've built up all your information. Then you want to preview it. Then you select the preview button. But one important thing I've missed out here that will be really beneficial. I'm going to go back to where we did our research here. They've got a built-in bookmark option. So you want to save the bookmark separate so you can access it quickly. Just go into the website you want and tap on bookmark. It says it's added it. I'm then going to go to John PJ and do the same thing. And select bookmark. Click OK. Now to access those bookmarks, come to Manage and select Bookmarks. And then they both file. You can double tap and it goes straight back to that website for you. And bear in mind, all your bookmarks will be organised depending on what research you're doing as well. Which, as you can imagine, be well handy. I'm going to minimise that. So let me show you the preview option. So there we go. So I've got ages. That was memory deficit in children. There's a bit of my research, and you can see where I've added that PDF. So if I tap on that link, it brings up that PDF for you to access that journal quickly. I mean, you could always store it and access it from the website if you want. But some you might actually have stored on your, your Mac or PC. And again, we've got trauma. So we've got the link to where I've got that text. And if I scroll down, we've got the picture of the young lady there as well. And there's the actual link at the bottom as well. And again, you can change your research subjects. You want to go to mental health and then look at cognitive and John PJ. You've got all your research organized there. Now, you're probably sitting there wondering, well, that's all great. But how do I find if I've got loads of research? Well, type in there and you can find your information you're looking for as well. So that's all great. But then again, you say to yourself, I want that in a Word document. It'd be great to have the reference list as well. We can do that as well. Select export. Should I just choose no, actually so I export a lot so I'm gonna select mental health and memory deficit in children so I'm gonna actually export a lot now important factor here at the bottom is that export references you've got an option here to choose your reference style click on it and choose your reference style if you can't see it don't worry come back to manage and go to reference options this is where you can actually choose your reference style. Now, if it's a specific reference style for you or college, you might just have to choose your options here to remove authors or dates and stuff. Now, if you can't find your reference style, select the option here, top right. Got an option here, we can actually look for your reference style. So if you come to the right here where it says add CSL, click that. And then you can type in your reference style you're looking for or scroll down as well. Now, they have a lot here. Look, that's just alphabetical way. So type in what you want. So I'm going to put APA because there's a couple of additions, isn't there? 
don't know if it's 16th, 17th. That shut me up. There's loads of them there. Look, there you go. So you can go down and look for your reference style and say your Pacific College or University wants to use a Pacific style and they might want to use the seventh edition with single space bibliography select. Then you can add that to your reference list there and click close and click OK. So when you go to export, which I'm going to do for you now, select all, choose your reference style there. American psychology reference style and I'm going to export to Word. That's just telling you make sure you're using a correct reference style. I can't guarantee it's going to be so you need to check that yourself. Click OK and you should now export everything to a Word document with the reference list. And then I can now open up automatically. So there's my title. There's my table of contents and you can see John PJ in there. And there's my research cognitive. I've got three sources with the links and the data I assessed them and the text underneath. There's my second lot. And there's my third and there's the photo of the distinguished man. But keep going down, you've now got your bibliography down there as well. All in alphabetical order. Now obviously your reference list won't look like that. I just changed the APA space one. So you just choose the correct reference doll. Scroll down. Then we've got the memory deficit in children and again table contents with your research all color coded with all the sources scroll down and there's the photo and the bibliography at the bottom let me scroll up so there's the main options within pro study of grabbing sources just go over the rest with you quick you can back up all your sources here and then restore them at a later date if you want the color overview could be useful because if you're doing a lot of reading and research your eyes will start definitely hurting select accept click OK so now it adds an overlay so if I select color you can play around with that color add opacity or OPEG as you want as well and that will help you with reading websites or word documents and so on now one quick option I want to show I haven't shown you yet or something online with text on it as an image I've got a perfect example if I go Google Books I need a bit of research on Google Books so let's open up Let's just put in Susan again, shall we? So, do a bit of research on Google Books and scroll down and click on anything that will do. Anything with a preview, just give you a demonstration. Now, you might come across websites like this a lot. Now, look at the text here. I can't highlight it because the text is actually an image, it's not even a PDF you can download. So what I could do is select the snapshot button again, and I might want to use that in my work. Obviously, you'd cite it. I'm not saying do plagiarism. Hold the left button down and drag over it, and it takes a snapshot of the image, which is OCR. Choose where we're going to put it. So where should we put it? So we leave it in. Yep, yeah, we leave it in there. Ages. This time, now select save. Unless you want to save as an image, select optical character recognition. Now processing. It should now convert that text into text that you can edit and use. And there it is. And you can actually edit that text and use that when you export it to Word. Or even edit it now if you want. And work with it. Really great option that is. And then I'm going to save it. And you can see number two, it's saved there. So there's a fast, quick overview of using Pro Study. As you can see, it's brilliant for research. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.